So my name's Abby. Um, I studied biomedical sciences at the Uni of Bath, um, and now I'm doing um, in my first year of the scientist training program doing audiology based at Royal United Hospitals in Bath. So. Initially, um, when I heard about the SDP, I wasn't even going to apply because of the word scientist in it. Um, I did my place work doing lab work and although I really enjoyed it, I kind of realised that long term lab work wouldn't be for me. Um, but doing a bit more research and speaking to other people, I realised there are lots of really like patient facing um, roles and the one that I went for, um, audiology. We're working with patients every single day so that was definitely one of the factors that drew me to the STP in general was the opportunity to work with patients on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, again having the fully funded masters in there is a really big big draw to it. I think the contrast with being at uni and paying to be there whereas now I'm getting paid to study with things that are very relevant to my day-to-day -day work is also um, a really big factor and um, just generally um, I was interested in working for the NHS as a whole. Um, I think it's a really good organisation and I'm definitely happy to be working for them. So my placement year um, I did research in neuroscience so generally um, that was the area of biomedical um, science that I was interested in um, and the three specialisms on the STP um, within neurosensory sciences are neurophysiology, audiology and vision science. Um, so I knew that it was going to be one of those three that I would apply for. Um, and just doing more research, I found audiology really interesting. I really like the relevance to day-to-day -day life um, and doing the research kind of made me think more about hearing, which I hadn't really before, and the impact it would have on people to lose their hearing. And I just thought it was a really interesting area to learn more about and I'm definitely happy that I chose, chose that area. So day to day um, working with patients, we see a really big range of patients every single day um, and we do basic hearing tests on them um, and then we can go into more complex tests um, based on those results. Um, but the kind of bread and butter of what we do is doing hearing tests and fitting hearing aids and making them personalised for each, pa each patient. So, from what I remember from the application process, um, I remember the initial written part, I found it really difficult to get everything in the question into the 250 words and I think they are trying to challenge you by doing that. Um, I guess a tip there I would give is just really do try to address every single part of the question. It is hard but take the time kind of doing edits, getting feedback from other people and really try and make sure you're hitting every point, every point they want there. Um, I think with the online test it would probably be generic advice like do lots of practice. Um, I don't know anything more to say about those. And then with the interviews, um, again from the written, um, the written part of the application, just really trying to hone those skills of being precise and getting to the point because um, with the interviews there are four ten minute interviews. Um, and they ask you quite a lot in the 10 minutes, so you can't really afford to start going off on a tangent because they will just interrupt you. So really trying to kind of perfect the art of saying exactly what you want to say, bam, 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 get it done. Um, I think that's probably something that's worth practicing. Before applying, I was, um, I'd heard a lot of things about it. I'd heard people who had PhDs applying for it and not getting it and that absolutely terrified me and I thought I wouldn't get it at all. I think placement definitely helped me so just even though mine wasn't directly related to audiology really it was neuroscience but nothing to do with ears or hearing. Um, just having that general background in a related field um, I think was really useful. I think without the placement I wouldn't have had a chance of getting on it um, because just a lot of the skills are transferable so um, yeah, placement is definitely um, something that really helped me. And I think other experience, if you can get experience in the, in the field that you want to go into, that's ideal. But other things as well, um, like I spoke a lot about my volunteering in there, um, just showing that you 
kind of anything you can have relating to patients or showing any caring or compassionate side does go a long way, I think, um, for any job within the NHS, really. Um, I really like how much there is going on all, all the time with the STP. Um, there's never really a dull moment and whether it's uni stuff or work stuff, there's always, always things going on. Um, with the first year at uni, I really like the breadth you get. So for um, my specialism, we learn all about ears, but also about eyes and brain. So you get a kind of feel of the whole of um, neurosensory sciences. And I think they like us to know this because they like the multidisciplinary kind of um, approach to things. So I really like having, it's not like you start and you only will ever learn about your specialism. You do learn about things surrounding it as well. Um, and likewise, you learn things more about the NHS as a whole, about professionalism, about leadership, which also is really useful too. Um, but then the work-based learning, you really get stuck in quickly and learn a lot about your specialism. And if I think about the amount I've learned in the past few months, like it's crazy. I didn't know anything a few months ago and now I'm actually at the stage where I can do a test on a patient and feel like I know what I'm doing. So. You learn a lot which is really really nice and I really enjoy kind of working with patients every day and feeling really kind of stimulated in that way. I guess it comes with with the positive kind of there is a lot you're learning which is great at times it can be like there's so much to learn and it's it is difficult um, I definitely found at the very start getting a balance was hard I feel like I would sometimes come home from work work on an essay, go to bed and do the same the next day, but um, it, you do learn how to manage it and especially because um, we get one study day a week, so if you manage your time well you can get a lot done there and it doesn't have to take up your evenings and weekends, it just takes a bit of practising like honing, honing that skill. I'd say um, in your written application and also in face-to-face -face interviews, I think just really showing your enthusiasm and getting that across goes a long way. Um, it's easy in written applications to try and use like fancy words and seem really professional and stuff, but at the end of the day, they want someone who is really interested in the field and can get that across. So um, definitely, yeah, in the written and the face-to-face -face interviews, really show why you want the role. Um, try and illustrate it all with examples. If you're saying you can do this or you have this skill, try and back it up with an example where you've actually shown that. Um, and I think again the classic one, just be yourself and then you know the outcome of it. At least people are judging based on you and truly you and not something you might be putting on a little bit. So yeah, very generic advice but can't, it worked for me. <laughs>